Hello there, Matt with Limbit here. In this video, I'll be highlighting some work I did alongside the AWS DevOps team to create a solution for running highly available Jenkins deployments at scale. In the description of this video, you'll find links to blogs describing the problems surrounding running HA Jenkins deployments at scale, along with the solution that Limbit and AWS has put together as well as the complete reference architecture describing the technical details, showing you how you can do the same. The biggest challenges with running Jenkins at scale are directly related to compute and storage. Eventually, your Jenkins deployment will be building so many projects all at the same time, and a vertically scaled or single server deployment will not be enough. Running Jenkins in EKS solves this problem by enabling you to scale compute horizontally through adding extra EKS worker nodes when needed. But what happens when the node hosting the single Jenkins controller fails? You need to be able to move Jenkins controller to another node in the EKS cluster. This creates a new dependency on highly available storage. In EKS, EBS volumes are block devices which are highly performant but bound to a single AZ. EFS is a shared file system which can be accessed across AZs but is not as performant as block devices such as EBS. So you're either choosing between storage performance or availability when choosing between EBS or EFS, respectively. Limbit SDS, powered by LinStore and DRBD, fill the gap by enabling synchronous replication of EBS volumes across AZs, giving you both performance and availability. This is the solution you can read about by following the links below. You'll find performance numbers and other details in the full reference architecture, but I'll demonstrate cross AZ failover and touch on some of the higher level points in this video. I've already deployed an EKS cluster, Linbit SDS and Jenkins as described in the reference architecture. So again, check that out if the deployment steps are what you're interested in seeing. Um, what you see on my screen here is just a simple kubectl get nodes and kubectl get pods o wide so you can see where all my pods are running within the cluster. I also have the Jenkins UI here with a simple project built that simply echoes the date into a log file. Um, we'll run a build right now just to create some logs and some data on the DRBD devices that Linbit SDS has deployed. If we look here, we can see the worker node, the worker pod spin up in the cluster. And back in the UI, we can see our build is running. And it's completed. And we can check the console output just to see, you know, we have our date there, we have some data written to the device, and back in the shell, we can see the Jenkins pod has that same data, same date, and it's mounting a DRBD device at Jenkins home, which is where everything is stored. We can also see the node that's currently hosting the controller pod in our cluster. It's this node here. And we can also see in the LinStore cluster that this is the same node where our block device is in use. But we can also see that we have the same resource deployed on all our nodes in the Kubernetes cluster, the EKS cluster. And also we can see the same thing in the LinStore UI. In the dashboard we see we have three nodes, three resources deployed. They're all the same resource in this case. Uh, but if we drill down into resources, uh, it's kind of squashed because of my current display settings for the video, but we can see the same data that we saw in the terminal output 
in a nice little UI. You can also just kind of browse around, see our nodes listed there, see the various storage pools I've set up as, a, as outlined in the reference architecture, as well as other things that we won't dive into um, in this demonstration, but they're there. And the last thing I wanted to show before we fail the current Jenkins controller host is the node affinity on the persistent volume used by Jenkins. So we see here the three nodes that are currently listed in the node affinity on the PV. Uh, these are immutable usually in Kubernetes and DKS. Um, but what we'll see is that after the failover, the Linstor operator um, deployed by Limbit SDS will update this node affinity so that it addresses the correct nodes and the cluster knows it can fail over to any of these nodes and attach that block device if needed. So over in my dashboard for EC2, we can see my three EKS nodes here. And we saw that we were running our Jenkins controller on the node ending in 17.241 with its host name. That is not this node. That is this node. And we can go ahead and just terminate the instance to simulate a instance failure or an AZ outage or any kind of uh, node level failure. And we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll switch back to the shell where we can watch that failover happen. The longest I've seen this take is about five minutes. So we'll skip through that, fast forward through that. But I'll run this, I'll leave this watch command running. So you can all watch it happen, albeit a little sped up. So we can see the Jenkins pod is back up and running without user interaction. And we should be able to see that the terminated node is being evicted from the Linstore cluster. And this process happens automatically, but it generally takes a while, you want to configure pretty generous timeouts just to uh, avoid unnecessary evacuations or complete evictions. Um, but we'll go ahead and kick this node out to speed things along for the purposes of the demo. And we should be able to see a healthy resource list with a new resource deployed on our new node in the cluster. And if we switch over to the Jenkins UI, refresh this page, I'll just refreshed immediately. Uh, well, we can navigate around and see everything's good, run a new build schedule a new build, but we can also check our old build. See the same output that we had before, just proving that our storage was replicated, our storage is accessible across AZs. And back in the shell, we can check the outputs of our commands that we used earlier just to see you know, our old data, we're remounting that same DRBD device, um, but we're running on a new node. We can check the node affinity just to see that we have the new node listed there.
and we can see 1363, 5613, and 74245. So all nodes can access that volume and the host EC2 systems can continue to fail and our service can continue to fail over. And this is really all I wanted to demonstrate in the video. And for the full details and background of the, the solution that AWS and Limbit worked on together, be sure to check out those links to the full reference architecture and blogs surrounding the topic. And of course, thanks for watching.